Okay, section 7.8 is really important. It deals with improper integrals. I'm going to make three, three videos on this section. The first one deals with uh, type 1, where you have infinite limits of integration. The second one is going to be type 2, uh, improper integrals, where you have a discontinuous integrand. And the third video is going, to, is going to be dealing with what's called the comparison theorem. Very important for next quarter. Anyway, let, let's look at this integral from 1 to infinity. This is a type 1, where you have infinity as one of your, is your upper limit of dx over x squared can be thought of as the all the area under the curve of 1 over x squared to the right of 1. Your first guess might be that that should be in, in infinity. It turns out not to be the case here. Look, we, we define the, defi the, the improper integral to be the limit as t goes to infinity of the definite integral from 1 to t of dx over x squared. So we first compute the definite integral and then take the limit at, at the very end. So we get, when we in integrate x on dx over x squared, we get x to negative 1 over negative 1, evaluated from 1 to t. So what you end up with is negative 1 over x from 1 to t. So let's factor the negative 1 out. And when we evaluate, we get um, the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over t minus 1. t goes to infinity. This, this, ter this term goes to 0, so you get 1. So again, what that says is this area under this curve here equals 1. All right, well, let's look at another one. Uh, let's look at uh, the improper integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x. Well, again, this first step is very important. Uh, write it as a limit as t goes to infinity of 1 to t of dx over x. So you, 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 you compute the um, definite integral. It should be in terms of t. The integral of dx over x is ln of absolute value of x. We don't need the absolute values because we're positive on the x. So when you plug in t, you get ln of t minus ln of 1, which is 0. Finally, you take the limit. What is the limit as t goes to infinity of the natural log function? It equals infinity. So, so here, here's an integral that di diverges. So how could the area under 1 over x from 1 to infinity be infinite, but the area under 1 over x squared be finite? In fact, it equals 1. The answer is it, it has to do with, with, with the rate at which the, um, the curve is getting close to the x-axis. This gets close to the x-axis fast enough so that the area is, is finite. This one doesn't. Interesting paradox, isn't it? All right, let's see. What about this one? We got the um, integral from zero to infinity of sine x dx. So this is the improper integral. It's all the area under the, underneath the sine function from zero to infinity. Let's see. I think your guess is right on this one. Uh, would you say that it di diverges? The the area is going to it's going to os oscillate. It turns out the area from zero to pi, I believe, is two. So the area is going to go from 2, then, it, then when you add this area, your, your total area is going to be 0, right? 2 plus negative 2. So the area is going to oscillate between 0 and 2, I think. So how would you compute that um, using cal calculus? Well, again, it's the limit as t goes to infinity, 0 to t of sine x. When you compute the integral, you get negative cosine x from 0 to t. Remember, it's the limit of t goes to infinity of this. When you plug in t, you get this. Now, taking the limit, the reason why this diverges is because the cosine function, the limit as t goes to infinity of cosine, does not exist because it di it oscillates. So that, that's your answer. We would say this uh, improper integral does not exist. Here's a good one. See if you can do this one. You should be able to handle this one. Okay, so let's see. Let's uh, let's write it as a uh, limit of a definite integral. Then we're going to have to use. Did you use integration by parts on this one? u is ln of x, dv is x to the negative 2 dx. So then du is dx over x, and v would be um, negative 1 over x. So you get this, and then when you integrate this, you get um, uh, you get x to the negative 1 over negative 1, so you get minus 1 over x. So this, this is what you get when you integrate. And then you evaluate that from 1 to t. So when you evaluate it from 1 to t, you get this. Now, when we compute the limit at the end here, uh, you better watch it. Uh, um, this first limit is t goes from, I factored the negative sign out too, by the way. So when you, when you look at the limit as t goes from infinity of ln t over t, that's not obvious. That, that's in fact an indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. So you, ha you have to show some, something there. Don't, don't just say it's zero. I put an asterisk there. This is kind of handy. I put an asterisk there. Then I went over here and, and, and showed using Lope-Tal's rule 
that since it has to form infinity over infinity, you can take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and the limit as t goes to infinity of this equals zero. So it's not hard to show it, but there's something to say there. This goes to zero. This is obvious that this goes to zero as t goes to infinity. So your final answer is one. Interesting. Let's do a couple more. Uh, on this one, this is interesting. The, uh, the integral from negative infinity to zero of two to the x. The, the picture here looks, looks, looks like this. What is, what is your guess there uh, uh, as, as t goes to negative infinity? Is that area from negative infinity to zero finite? It might be. It's not, not obvious. Definitely not obvious. So when you do the integration of 2 to the x, you get 1 over ln of 2 times 2 to the x. Remember, it's the limit as, as t goes to negative infinity. So when, when you plug in 0, you get 1 over ln of 2, minus when you plug in t, you get this. So what is the limit as t goes to negative infinity of 2 to the t? Well, by looking at the graph of 2 to the t, you, you can see, or 2 to the x, you can see that, that this is getting close to 0. As, as x gets close to negative infinity, 2 to the x gets, gets close to 0. So this, this term goes to 0. So your final answer is going to be 1 over ln of 2. Nice. One more. We've got time for one more here. Okay, this, is, this one's kind of tricky. Some, sometimes you can have an um, improper integral where you have an uh, infinite limit, a less a lower limit, and an upper limit. So um, what you would do there, you have to break it up into two separate uh, improper inter inter integrals, and both of them have to converge independently. So... Um, this would have to converge and this would have to converge. If you look at the graph though um, of 1 over x squared, it's an even function, so, so I would accept this. If you, if, you, if you computed one of these integrals, like i2, if you could show that that one converged, then by sym symmetry, since it's an even function, this would have to converge as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at i2. It's easier to compute. It's not. They're both pretty easy. Let, let, let's, let's compute i2, which is the integral from um, 0 to infinity of dx over x squared plus 9. So it's the, we define that to be the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to t of dx over x squared plus 9. Now, I mean, there is a formula for this, but, um, but um, let's just say you forgot the formula in general. Uh, this, the, the, the formula for this integral involves inverse tangent, but let's just say you forgot it. This would be good practice. It's, it's clearly going to be a... a, a uh, a tangent a trig substitution. We're going to let we're going to let x equal three tan theta. So then dx equals three secant theta d, d theta. So so you, so you for dx you plug it in right here, and for um, you plug you plug for um, x you plug in uh, three tan squared or three tan theta here. Uh, now I'm not going to switch the limits of integration. I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to um, convert back to x at the end because it's kind of awkward. So anyway, on the, what, what do you get? You get one third. Everything cancels, doesn't it? Because you get a, this becomes a secant squared. So the secant squares cancel. You just get one third times d theta, the integral of d theta, I should say. So when you integrate, you get one third uh, times the limit as t goes to infinity of theta. Now, what uh, evaluate between x equals zero and x equals t? Well, if you, it follows from the substitution, however, that if x equals three tangent of theta, then theta is inverse tangent x over three. So you replace so you re, 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 so you replace uh, theta with inverse tangent x over three. So when you evaluate, it, you get one third the limit as t goes to infinity of of inverse tangent t over three minus inverse tangent zero. Okay, well what is the inverse tangent of zero? That's the angle whose tangent is zero. Isn't that just zero? And so now what is the inverse tangent? What is the, this is kind of something to say here maybe? What is the limit as t goes to infinity of inverse tangent of t over three? Well. The question becomes, what is the inverse tangent getting close to as t gets close to infinity? Well, if you look at the graph of the inverse tangent function, as, as t gets close to infinity, then um, the inverse tangent is getting close to pi over 2. So this limit, this limit right here equal, equals pi over 2. So, so when you multiply by 1 third, you get pi over 6. So that, that, that's, that's I1. So then the question is, what is, uh, what is the whole improper integral. You could say by symmetry the the integral from negative infinity to infinity of dx over x squared plus 9 is 2 times i, I2, which is 2 times pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Nice, huh? Alrighty, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.